Okay, this is a combustion analysis problem. Compound X is an organic compound that contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we're going to combust this, and that means burn it in the presence of oxygen. And that results in 1.904 grams of carbon dioxide and 0 0.5201 grams of water. Okay, so we started with our sample and our sample had 1.270 grams and then we also had carbon dioxide and water so I'll put carbon dioxide here and I'll put water there okay for carbon dioxide uh, we started with or we, we resulted in 1.904 grams of carbon dioxide, 0 0.5201 grams of water. Okay, so when we combust something, that means we have our compound X, our mystery compound, and we burn that in the presence of oxygen, and that gives us carbon dioxide and water. Now, I can't balance this equation because I don't actually know the formula for compound X, but this is the general idea. So compound X plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water. Now, Compound X only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. So when I burn it in the presence of oxygen and get carbon dioxide, all of this carbon must have come from compound X because it certainly didn't come from this oxygen. And all of this hydrogen also must have come from compound X because it didn't come from this oxygen here. And so that is a, a way we can figure out the empirical formula if we know where all the carbon and all the hydrogen came from. So what I recommend when you do this is to first set up a little chart just to keep everything organized. So we have three elements. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. And then we're going to fill out this chart. And we're going to write out the number of moles of carbon in compound X, hydrogen in compound X, oxygen in compound X. Then we're going to find the mass in grams of each of these things in compound X. And using this table right here, we'll be able to figure out the empirical formula. Okay, so let's start with carbon. So, the question we want to ask when we're trying to find out uh, what's going on here is how much carbon is in this 1.270 grams of compound X? Well, to figure that out, we know that all the carbon that's in CO2 is the carbon that came from compound X. Well, we have 1.904 grams of carbon dioxide Okay, and let's see, what can we do with this? So set up our train tracks here. 1.904 grams of carbon dioxide. Well, maybe let's convert that to moles. So 44.010 grams of carbon dioxide are in one mole of carbon dioxide. Uh, this number, 44.010, uh, that's just, uh, if you were to look on the periodic table and look at um, carbon and then two oxygens and add them together this is the molar mass that you would get okay and then I'm not interested in carbon dioxide I'm interested in carbon and I know that in one mole of carbon dioxide well there's one carbon there so that would be the same as one mole of carbon is in one mole of carbon dioxide Okay, so now you do this on the calculator, type in the numbers, and you end up getting 0 0.04326, and this is moles of carbon. Okay, that's the first thing we can put in the chart. So moles of carbon, 0 0.04326. Great. Now we want the mass of carbon. Okay, well, if we have the moles of carbon, it's pretty easy to get the mass of carbon. Just do another conversion here. So 0 0.04326 moles of carbon. And we know that um, one mole of carbon is 
12.011 grams of carbon. And again, that comes from the periodic table. You can look that up for carbon. And so when you do this, you get 0 0.5196 grams of carbon. Okay, great. That can go under mass of carbon, 0 0.5196. Okay, now let's look at hydrogen. Okay, so we're going to pretty much uh, do the same thing we did for carbon here. We know that hydrogen um, was present in H2O, and all of the hydrogen in H2O must have come from compound X. So we had, if we look at our chart at the top here, in H2O we had 0 0.5201 grams of water uh, from this combustion analysis. Okay, so if we go back down here, 0. 5201 grams of water. Set up the train tracks. And we know that there's 18.02 grams of water in one mole of water. Again, got that number from the period periodic table. And one other thing you gotta be careful of here in one mole of water, it's actually two hydrogens. So, two moles of hydrogen. Okay, because it's, you know, H2O. So, uh, all right, number, 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 0 0.05773 moles of hydrogen. Okay, so we can put that in our chart. Moles of hydrogen, 0 0.05773. Okay. Uh, what do we have next? Uh, oh yeah, the mass of hydrogen. Okay, we have the moles of hydrogen. We can get the mass of hydrogen pretty easily. 0 0.05773 moles of hydrogen. And let's see, 1.008 grams of hydrogen are in one mole of hydrogen. Again, from the periodic table. And we do this, you get 0 0.05819 grams of hydrogen. Okay, uh, let's put that up here. 0 0.05819. Okay, we're almost done with the chart here. Uh, we have a little bit of a problem though because how are we going to get oxygen? Oxygen is on both sides of the equation so it's kind of everywhere here. It's in all four compounds because we know there's also oxygen in compound X. But we know that the total mass of the sample was 1.270 grams, and we know the mass of the other two things here. So I think what we could do, let's just do a little subtraction here. I'll do it down here. So the mass of the sample, so this is for oxygen now. The mass of the sample was 1.270 grams, and if I subtract out the grams of the carbon and the hydrogen that are in the sample, what's left over should be the oxygen, because there's only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the compound. So that would be 0 0.5, one, okay, I'm screwing this up, 5196 grams, that says 5196, plus 0 0.05819 grams. Okay, and you subtract, and you end up getting if you do the subtraction, 0 0.69221 grams of oxygen. So I can put that up here under the mass of oxygen, 69221. And now uh, I need the moles of oxygen. Well, that's easy to do. It's the same thing we've been doing with carbon and hydrogen. So 0 0.69221 grams of oxygen. Okay, so now I'm going kind of the other way. I want to grams and get moles, uh, but it's the same idea. So for oxygen, 15.999 grams of oxygen are in one mole of oxygen. And just, you know, why didn't I say 16? Well, uh, just to be safe, because there's so many decimal places being carried out in a lot of these other numbers, I might as well write 15.999 instead of the 16 that you probably use all the time, just to be safe. Uh, and if you do that, you get 0 0.04327 moles of oxygen. And I'll put that in the chart, and now the chart is done. So, now what? Okay, so we're almost done. 
Now comes the easy part. Look at the moles column here. There, and pick the smallest one. What's the smallest value out of those numbers? So it looks like, well, these two are almost the same here. I guess 0 0.04326 is the smallest. I mean, they're really pretty much the same. So we're going to pick the smallest thing, and we're going to divide each of these three numbers by the smallest one. So if I divide them, so I'll kind of do this over here. So this is after you divide by the smallest. All right, well, 0 0.04326 divided by 0 0.04326 is 1. 0 0.05773 divided by 0 0.04326 is 1.33. And then this is uh, also just about 1, because, you know, 0.4326, 0 0.04327, about the same thing, so that's pretty much 1. Okay, so that tells me that my formula must be C1. I won't write the 1, though. Okay, fine, I will. There, 1. Uh, H, 1.33, and O, 1. Except I don't like that, 1.33. I want nicer numbers than 1.33. So maybe if I multiply everything by 3, that'll give me better numbers. And I end up getting C3, H, 4, O, 3. And this is my empirical formula. Now remember, this is not the molecular formula, this is the empirical or the simplest formula. Uh, using the information we have here, you can't actually figure out what the molecular formula is. You can only get the empirical formula. But that's okay. That's what the question asked. Determine the empirical formula of compound X.